All right, welcome to another edition of Alumni Zoom Room, where we've been catching up with former Bristol Community College student athletes. Before I introduce today's guests, I want to remind everyone they can find prior Alumni Zoom Room recordings, as well as upcoming student athlete planning series on our athletics website at bristolccbayhawks.com. Now I'd like to introduce today's guest, a two-year member of our men's soccer program in 2015, uh, graduate of Bristol Community College, Flavio De Costa. Flavio, how you doing? I'm good, how are you? Good, glad to have you here. Thank you, thank you for having me. So Flavio, um, just gonna take you through a few questions, uh, just to kind of hear about your story from Bristol and, and, and to where you are now. Uh, if we could just start off by, tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure, so I, I was actually born in Brazil. Um, so I came here when I was very young. Um, you know, I went through schools mostly in Fall River. So I was very uh, you know, comfortable with the area and BCC was a great option, not only for the education that I got there, but for planning for the future. Uh, it really helped with you know, getting uh, into universities and getting scholarships and other grants that were available. So um, yeah, I mean, I, I've been playing soccer my whole life. The, the fact that BCC had a, a, a good athletic program and um, a good soccer team, we made it to the, the finals two years in a row. Um, that was very um, convenient and nice to have and on the side of a good education. Um, and yeah, for the most part, I've just been, you know, continuing my education. I just finished law school this year, um, start, currently studying for the bar exam. So things are, you know, moving along and it, ha it all started off with BCC. So. That's great. That's great. So <clears throat> before we started the, uh, the show, we were kind of talking about the, the pandemic and uh, yeah. how it's really affected everyone. Um, yeah. You know, you just you just mentioned you just finished law school. Uh, how's how's COVID, the COVID pandemic affected you? Well, I mean, it really just threw everything into a whirlwind. Like everything had I kind of had a set plan for everything. I you know, was going to graduate in May, take the bar exam in July. I was already working at a law firm, which I was going to go back to after I took the exam. Um, I had a, a fellowship lined up at another firm that I was going to do at the same time. Um, so when COVID hit, all of that just went awry. Like my, my uh, firm had to close down, the bar exam got postponed, the fellowship completely went away because they couldn't do anything in person anymore. And it was, it was all in-person meetings. So it was rough. It was a, a tough time, but you know, you have to persevere and kind of try to be flexible with what you do um, in your spare time. So that's what I had to do. And it's going, it's going pretty well right now. Right. And so you're, you're preparing to take that bar in February? Yes. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Well, good luck with that. Thank you. <laughs> it's, it's not an easy task <laughs> by any means. <laughs> can, can you talk to us a little bit about, you know, you know, what, what interests you in law and, and even more specifically, um, immigration and family law? Yeah, so um, I, I've always kind of had this desire to, to help people. Um, it was kind of always something that like I found inherently in my day-to-day -day behavior. Um, so when I looked at the legal field as a, a career, a career choice, I kind of realized like, you know, this is the one field where you can do a lot of good for a lot of people. You can make some substantial changes, whether it's through legislation or, um, you know, just defending the, the right person or helping out in one small case or helping people get their, you know, legal status just to be able to live a normal life here, um, helping families kind of get out of tough situations or, you know, be able to feel safe and protected. There's a lot of things that, uh, you know, lawyers do that kind of go unseen. It, you know, TV usually depicts lawyers as, you know, in courtrooms and making these really, you know, wordy arguments and stuff. And, you know, your day-to-day -day job isn't like that at all. It's really about, you know, talking to people, helping them out. Um, and I think that's what kind of pulled me towards the profession. Um, and then just going through life and everybody telling me like, oh, you should be a lawyer. You, you argue really well. Like you, you listen to everybody's side. And I think having that kind of um, like uh, support kind of made me make that decision. It's great. You can tell you have the, the, the passion for it and, and you know, you're going to, I know you're going to make a big difference. So that, I that's hope so. great. That's great. 
Um, <clears throat> when you started at Bristol, um, did you know that's what you wanted to get into? Uh, yeah, I had a set idea. Um, that was kind of my like, like five year plan was to graduate there and then finish up at uh, Roger Williams where I got my bachelor's degree and then get into law school uh, from there. So it was part of my plan from the from the beginning. Um, I didn't realize how much easier it was after I went to BCC. Um, you know, I just graduated and I have, you know, I went to law school, I have two bachelors, uh, two I'm one associates in the minor and I owe less than $80,000 in student debt. So that's a big difference than the 200, 300,000 most of my classmates graduated with. So that was huge. That's great, that's great. Um, can you talk just a little bit about, and you, you mentioned a little bit about, you know, going to, to Bristol or Roger Williams, but um, can, can you talk a little bit about the path that, that you took uh, from Bristol you know, how, how you decided to go to Roger Williams and, and where you are today? Yeah, so um, BC, I don't know if they still do. I'm sure they do. They offer the, the tuition compensation for when you go to an in-state school after BCC. Um, so when I graduated, I had a few options and BCC offered to pay like, I think it was like 75 or 80 percent of the tuition cost. So that made my decision very um, easy because th not only was Roger Williams you know, right down the street from where I already was and I got to stay at home, it was very in a, uh, sorry, very cost effective to go there. So with, when I, you know, went to BCC and realized that I could get good grades there, um, I had great professors and the education that I was getting was actually just as good, if not better than what I received at Roger Williams it not only prepared me financially, it also prepared me for the actual education and going to classes and kind of being held to a higher standard. So I was very surprised at how the, the education and the, the lessons that I was learning at BCC really translated well into the university setting. Absolutely, I, th I think that um, a lot of people get that surprise. I mean, we all know it. We all yeah. know it, but you know when you when you finally step on, onto the campus and experience it, I think that's right. you know, where, you, where you kind of see the light. So yeah, that's 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 awesome. Um, looking looking back at your time at Bristol and, and as a student athlete, is is there uh, one experience or or uh, a number of experiences that kind of stand out from an athletic standpoint to you? Yeah, from an athletic standpoint, I think my my like highlight was when I scored the first goal of the year I think it was my second year um and it was just so like the reason it stood out it wasn't the biggest game of my career and it wasn't the you know nicest goal but it was just the feeling of getting back into it and especially right now when like all we want is to get back into our routines and our normal lives that was a moment where I was like yes like I'm back into it like that kind of kicked off that year for me and a lot of good things happened that year. And it really felt like that was kind of the start of it. Um, and then, you know, just over the season, just being able to have like a group of guys that were in similar situations. We all had similar classes and we all had practice. Um, you know, it was just a good bonding experience, but it helped me kind of deal with school and all of those other things better because I had that to, to kind of keep pushing me forward. That's awesome. I, I think we have a, a video interview with you after yes. that game. <laughs> yes, we do. Yeah. So, uh, and that's what you know. That's what we really we really hope to to create and, and provide is is really that opportunity, right? The opportunity for for students, you know, like yourself, to to continue uh, your education and, and athletic careers. And you yeah. know, hopefully, we can we can do that at the highest level uh, possible. Um, what, what advice, um, just wrapping up here, what advice do you have to give to any current or future Bristol student athletes? Um, I think patience is the first thing. Uh, I, I know that, you know, everyone kind of is ready to get to the next step, um, but make sure that you take your time and you do all the things that you're working on right now um, because you won't be able to come back afterwards and do it again. There are some things that I wish I had done better. I had committed more time to, um, not that it didn't work out, but I, I do know that if I had been a little bit more patient and focused on the things I was doing in the moment, rather than looking ahead so much, it would have benefited me more uh, going forward. And then the other thing too is, you know, just don't put, be so hard on yourself. You know, 
you're going to get bad grades. You're going to make mistakes. But if you just keep pushing and going forward, eventually you'll get what you want. All you have to do is have that desire and that motivation to go after it. Um, it you know, don't listen to people who say you can't. You can do whatever you want to do. You know, I, I was an immigrant with parents who did not make a lot of money. And I had a really tough time going through college. And now I'm a, a law grad with, you know, very good um, employment opportunities going forward. So just keep working at it. Be patient, um, work hard and have fun. Make sure you have fun because that's that's the number one thing that kept me going. I, I've always been the type of person that likes to have a good time, likes to interact with people and being in a good mood and having that good spirit that'll carry you on itself sometimes. Excellent. That's, that's great advice, Flavio. Appreciate that. So uh, there you have it. Flavio Acosta, uh, 2015 criminal justice major, minor in accounting, and a uh, member of the men's soccer program. He's getting ready to take the bar exam coming up in a couple months, and uh, we wish you a lot of luck on that. Uh, we appreciate you taking the time to share your story today and, and wish you continued success. Thank you, Flavio. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Go Bayhawks.